you're the poor man's Jay Gyllenhaal, who is essentially the poor man's Tobey Maguire, and he's the poor man's Matt Damon. Coming up next, we have Vince DeFiore from Cake. Please welcome Vince. The big thing about this new album is that it's oddities and, and covers. I wanted to know what decisions were made, you know, how you got to these these songs. Were they favorite? Maybe the album material isn't ready yet, and we'll uh, throw around some songs that are fun to, to cover, and, and that John uh, is looking forward to singing, and some arrangements that will maybe uh, good, be good for the band to learn. Now that we uh, have our own means of uh, putting out an album through a website and finding our own distribution, trying to do things our own way, we thought it was a good time to put them all together. And we, you know, we were really happy with the result when we saw the sequence of songs and how they sounded. And, and a lot of these songs have been sort of road tested already through different media, like Strangers in the Night was on the Stubbs the, the Zombie video game soundtrack. And one song, uh, Never Never Gonna Give You Up, the Barry White song was on American Werewolf in Paris. Some other things like that. Sarah McLaughlin and this organization called For the Kids, we had Mana Mana on there. How would you introduce what Cake is to an unformed listener? I've had to kind of pitch you guys and say, oh, you got to listen to these guys, they do blank. I usually always introduce it by saying it's a rock band because that the alternative moniker, I don't think that anyone wants to hear that music is alternative anymore. It really doesn't say that much, and it's almost sort of a bland description. It means that you're reacting to something, but there's not there's nothing inherent in yourself. You know, term was applicable for a certain period of time in the 90s uh, when there was such a reaction to heavy metal and all the hair bands from L.A. But if you, if you look at the history of music, I guess you just have to say we're a rock band. If I was introducing someone to your music, what would be the first song you'd want them to hear? Well, I'd say songs like Friend is a Four-Letter Word or uh, Frank Sinatra or uh, Long Line of Cars, um, Love You Madly. I think, you know, a lot of those songs show a, a lot of aspects of the group between the guitar and the trumpet and the songwriting. They, they sort of, they're sort of uh, maybe not descriptive of, of the band as a whole, but I think that we sort of uh, fleshed the band sound out within those songs. You know, we brought the potential of the band into those songs as much as we could. You're talking about playing live. What's your favorite? Frank Sinatra is one that uh, we, we rarely leave out of the show. It just has such a unique feel to it and works into a set. It connects with the audience really well. It's a good way to, to start a show and introduce ourselves as a band. Well, you mentioned a uh, long line of cars. I love how the, a lot of the songs are car themed, you know, with uh, Satan is my motor and distance and things like that. Is that just a, a running passion? It's just such a strong motif, you know, that image of a car is, permeates American culture. So it's just a good metaphor because everyone identifies with it. And there's a, there's a car on your brand new album. It's an upside down car with uh, vegetation growing out of the bottom of it. Sort of as if a car flopped over in a swamp and, and started getting um, swamp grass growing out of it. Or sort of uh, commentary because it looks like the death of a car, but uh, there's a lot of life to it also. And, and it all, uh, almost looks like one of those images that could be flipped upside down and it would look right too. That's a good one. That was originally made for a t-shirt and we, we liked it so much that we made it into the album cover. We recently found some designers that, that we like that are compatible with John's style, and that's some um, aesthetic apparatus. Has the fame and or riches allowed you to cultivate any like type of cool collection or, or hobby? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, the fame has allowed me to collect places I've been. That's nice. the most valuable thing. I, 
I would the most pathetic version of the MTV Crib show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it'd be awful. It'd be depressing. You know, certainly have bought more trumpets than I would have ever bought. He's a great uh, uh, maker. I guess you're into uh, bikes into gadgets and and um, things of quality. Uh, I, I play a Colicchio trumpet. Um, it's a uh, a shop in Hollywood that uh, hand makes their own trumpets. It's the third generation now that's been making um, trumpets out of there, uh, out in uh, Hollywood. I, but I've seen them in shops all the way on the East Coast. So they, they make it all over the world, but they come out of um, this handmade place. There's three or four guys that are making them real, real nice horns. So I bought myself a nice copper Lucio <laughs> horn. I like a lot. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, going to, being able to see the world is great because I remember before I I ever traveled with a band, boy, I was just yearning to see so much of the world. Yeah, we we don't get to go to the nice beach places, you know. You see pictures of the Fiji Island, Virgin Island, the Bahamas right. on television, Hawaii. We don't we don't get to go to those beautiful places in the world, or or the forests, or you know, beautiful state parks and stuff like that. But as far as cities go, I've seen a lot of cities. Um, I've seen Istanbul and Jakarta, uh, a lot of Western Europe, and of course uh, a lot of the United States. And it's pretty that's satisfying, you know. For anyone who's made the, uh, the effort to, to see these cities, either because it's through work or vacation, there's certain um, certain knowledge that comes with it. Uh, it's sort of calming in a way. I completely agree. I've been the last two years. I finally went to Europe with my wife, um, and uh, just completely inspiring. I had, but uh, you know, I was shooting pictures and uh, just could not get enough of something that was so different. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a good education, and it feels good to connect with those other people that are sort of a mystery. There's just people in your mind that are aliens that live in other other places of the country and 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 and, and in other countries. To connect with those people makes you realize that things are the same all over. Right. That, um, you know, people are the same. People have the same needs and, and desires, wishes. Everyone's just trying to get on with their life. So it's something about coming home and having that knowledge feels good for you. Well, on that note, i got to uh, recommend Apocalypto. I just saw that this weekend for the oh, first yeah. time. Oh, it was amazing. It was uh, absolutely amazing. If you love culture and just seeing something completely new, it's, they did an amazing job with it. I saw Unforgiven last night for the first time. I was trying to talk about time and place. I mean, of course, it's still a movie. They set up this town in such a way that you could just sort of see, feel what it was like to, to live there, you know. The characters are very real. So that was a good good way to imagine that you were in, you know, like late 19th century uh, West, like Wyoming and Montana. Well, I'm going to ask you one last question. If uh, if sheep go to heaven, where do the toy collectors go? <laughs> sheep go to heaven, where do the toy collectors go? I, I guess with all their stuff, uh, making your own heaven there, being surrounded by all the stuff you like, I guess. The material world is uh, is underrated, I guess, isn't it? There's yes. A lot of, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of joy to be had. Surround yourself with beauty. That's the wherever you find beauty, just surround yourself with it. Well, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Oh, right on. Thanks a lot. Generals gathered in their masses. Destruction Sorcerer of death's construction